you don't have to look hard to see the stark contrasts of Indonesian society. Its growing middle class now numbers around 25 million, but a good 40 million people still live in poverty. And although the economy grew at some 6.3% last year, its highest rate since the Asian financial crisis, nearly 1 in 10 Indonesians is without a job. And life hasn't been getting any easier for people like this family of vegetable sellers. How are we supposed to provide for our children? Everything is so expensive. Things like cooking oil, rice, kerosene. Even the vegetables have become expensive now. Inflation is expected to hit double digits this year, largely because of the government's recent decision to slash its heavy and unsustainable subsidies on fuel by some 30 percent. It would be good for the economy, but the problem on this issue, the problem on the reform is the cost is immediate, but benefit is always in the medium term. Yeah, so convincing the people, managing the expectation, and also managing the pain is really the key issue. To try to do that, the government is giving the country's poorest families cash handouts of some $11 a month till the end of the year. Indonesia is a net importer of oil, but taking into account its exports of natural gas, coal, palm oil, timber and minerals, it has benefited overall from the global commodities boom. Foreign direct investment hit $10 billion in 2007, its highest level for some years. Still not particularly impressive though, given the size of the economy. Indonesia is not doing uh, enough promotion as an investment uh, place. It's not attracting uh, foreign investors as, for example, neighbor countries are doing it. Foreign investors complain about the arbitrary nature of Indonesia's legal system, endemic corruption, rigid labor laws, and poor infrastructure. Infrastructure clearly has not kept pace with the overall development of the country, which means road transport, um, shipping, um, energy are all becoming bottlenecks uh, that need to be addressed quite urgently. But the World Bank and others believe President Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono is making headway. It is a government uh, that is making a very determined effort to reduce those obstacles and make the economy more uh, receptive and more attractive for investors. And I want to emphasize both domestic and foreign investors. The president has won praise for his government's crackdown against Indonesia's widespread corruption. The anti-corruption agency has gone after federal politicians, regional governors, and even the head of the country's central bank, who's being detained along with several other top bank officials. The information you know, you know's government has also won praise on other fronts. The president here has brought Indonesia to macroeconomic stabilities, which was not the case with the two predecessors. Exchange rates are pretty stable. The interest rates have come down from a level of 12 percent to around 8 percent right now. So it's, uh, I would say it's quite a positive track record. Analysts say he could have achieved more if not for the country's fragmented parliament in which the parties of the president and vice president combined only command one third of the seats. The president or the, or the vice president will talk to the, the, the leaders of the political parties and ask them, look, you know, what, you know, uh, what, what would it take uh, for, their, for them to support certain economic policies such as tax reform, uh, customs reform. Everything is done on a piecemeal basis. It may not be the most efficient way to run this vast, ethnically diverse country, but it's still progress. Looking at the last 10 years, if one considers the deep turmoil Indonesia found itself in 10 years ago, economically, politically, socially, and then the level of political stability and political effectiveness today is actually quite remarkable. As encouraging as the rebound in economic growth has been, Economists believe Indonesia needs to boost GDP growth closer to 8% a year if it's to emulate neighbors like Malaysia and Thailand and rapidly narrow the gap between the country's haves and have-nots.